Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're going to be comparing a 2022 Chevy Tahoe High Country Deluxe to a 2022 GMC Yukon Denali Ultimate. These are both basically fully loaded with pretty much every single option you can get. So I think this is like the best possible comparison that we could put together. Before I get into the video though, I do want to mention a shout out and thank you to the Chevy and Murray for originally letting me film the Tahoe High Country and then the National GMC and American Fork for letting me originally film the GMC Yukon. I'm going to include a link to both of their inventories in the description down below. And then on a side side note, if you want to save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into the comparison. Starting things off by going under the hood of the Yukon, we have a Natchi aspirated 6.2 liter V8 that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 420 horsepower and then 460 pound feet of torque. This is considered to be like the premium powertrain uh, for the Yukon and for the Tahoe as well. Now, popping over to the Tahoe, we also have the same 6.2 liter Natchi aspirated V8, also goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission, still has 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque torque and like i said this is the premium powertrain to get and since they're the premium models it makes sense that they both have it now popping back over to the yukon you can see stylistically it's very uh, distinct uh, especially compared to the tahoe and the escalade and i'll talk about that in a second but notice there with the body lines on the hood and i love this particular red paint really pops on the yukon you guys can see kind of there with a little bit of a flake. Looks great on uh, the sunlight. Now this is the big distinct feature, uh, the C-shaped uh, lights. It's kind of like GMC's stylistic Q with the LED lights. Um, but with the Tahoe and with the Escalade, their headlights are very similar in terms of the shape. And so they actually look more similar than the Yukon uh, looks to both of them, if that makes sense. And so this one definitely is the most unique stylistically. But you know, there's still a lot of similar elements, right? The overall size and the, you know, actual like design in terms of like the larger body panels and everything, so that's all like the same. But looks great. Popping over to the Tahoe, you can see here with the body lines all throughout the hood, it kind of knows how like waves up and down. And again, here's what I'm talking about with the lights. So this has reflector LEDs, just the general shape of them. And then you got the LED accent light down below that, and then the accenting off to the side, parking sensors on the front end. And then notice with the grill, um, they've got, uh, you can see with the special like high country uh, colors there on it, but notice how like the grill doesn't look as like open as what you have on the GMC. So it doesn't look as imposing, you know, from a front end perspective. And then popping back over here to the Yukon again, you can see massive uh, wheels, uh, 22s, which I mean, right, makes sense for an SUV of this size, especially when you're kind of going for that luxury market, you got to have big wheels to help show off. Uh, and coloration on it actually looks really good, actually. And then also the design. Notice how the wheels have a lot of like cuts and indentations in them so that uh, they just look a little bit more complex than what you usually see. And then you can see there with the Fender and then also got the GMC logo, the Denali logo. There's not any Ultimate badges on the outside of the Ultimate. I thought that was kind of interesting. You'd think they'd want to advertise that this is like the bad boy version, but mm, it's okay. And then here's your full side view. I love the side view on the Yukon. It looks great. And then you can see here with the tire and wheel set up, on the Tahoe High Country. Notice with the design on the wheel, it's um, it still looks good, but notice they use um, uh, high gloss chrome, right? And then you've got the silver trim and it just doesn't look quite as intricate. And then you can see there with the suspension, we'll talk about the suspension in a moment with both of them. Notice the High Country logo, and then you got the Tahoe logo as well. And then here's your full side view. By the way, both of them have Magnaride and both of them have air suspension. So there's your other, we'll talk with the suspension. And you see the two-tone design with the mirror. And then you got the chrome there, the door handles and the chrome trim around the window. Now here's the key fob for the Yukon. You can see a bunch of different functions, including remote start, opening for the window, opening for the full hatch, and also the shape and design of the key fob definitely looks, you know, super modern actually. And I don't know, I like how it feels. Now actually popping here into the hatch area, notice that uh, this isn't the XL, so it's got decent storage space behind the third row, but it's not massive. If you get the XL, then you have a lot more. Uh, with the Tahoe, you have to just get the Suburban, so it's a completely different name. But anyways, you can see with the seat controls, with the third row, you can raise and lower them. With the second row, you can only lower them down, so that's kind of like a distinct thing. And then you can see the outlet next to it. And with the third row up, like I said, storage space isn't great. But with the third row folded down, it's amazing. And if you need more, just get the XL. And that'll have the extra storage space that you desire. 
and also pretty slow for the lowering on the hatch so that was interesting but finishing things up here with the rear notice again c-shaped uh, tail lights again that's kind of a gmc style cq and then the exhaust tip super aggressive you got four or sorry not four four total but two on each side is what i meant to say and then you can see the gmc logo there at the center and then the bezel that covers the receiver hitch uh, towing capacity and payload are identical between both of them so that's that right and then here's a key fob over on the tahoe notice it's exactly the same right nothing's changed there and popping here to the interior like i said this is uh, comparable to that yukon because if you if the yukon was an xl then i'd have to do like a suburban for example so there's that notice all the controls here are the same uh, same thing with the power outlet <laughs> i love how the yukon power outlet was closed and this one was opened right it's opposite that's kind of funny but yeah, I, completely identical in terms of the whole setup and everything. And then here's how it actually functions. Uh, functionality on is the, is the same. So you can see there, it goes down really fast and actually raises really fast. I think it's the quickest that I've seen in a vehicle. Because most vehicles, it's like the motor is just so slow. Whereas this is definitely responsive. So I actually really like that. And same thing with the lowering on the hatch. And then you'll notice here, yeah, it's just as slow. So it's funny, the seats are fast, but the hatch is slow. Now, stylistically, again, you've got more of that silver trim there, Tahoe logo there in the center, and then same style cue with the exhaust tips, and then parking sensors there in the rear, bezel covering the receiver hitch. The whole bottom portion of the bumper is identical. Taillights are different, though. So if you combine the taillights, then they kind of make the Chevy logo on the back end. So I thought that's kind of a cool thing that Chevy's done with the taillight design. But overall, I think it looks great. And there's kind of like your three-quarters angle in the Tahoe. Pop back over to the Yukon. This is where the changes get a little bit more drastic. So just kind of remember what the door panel looks like from a stylistic perspective. And then also uh, notice the kind of texture they've done with the leather here. And then you can see the stitching. The stitching reminds me of, uh, have you seen, if you've seen the movie Coraline, like the mouths, that's kind of what that stitching reminds me of. It always kind of creeps me out whenever I look at the interior of a Yukon. <laughs> Sorry if I just ruined it for you. Power side steps as well. And you can see all the adjustments here on the seats. And notice that the seat folds down with that. Just press or pull it twice. You can see the third row. And I'm not going to pop in the third row of the Yukon, but I will in the uh, Tahoe. They have the same exact space in the third row, so that'll show you guys uh, that setup. But you can at least see what the seats look like and the armrest area and all that. So at least they make the seats in the third row look as nice as the seats in the second row and the driver and passenger seat. But this one has the uh, bench seat, actually, which is pretty rare. Usually they do a center console with the Denali Ultimates. And so uh, it's, yeah, it's, it makes it harder to get to the third row, but then you can carry around more people. You can see it's perforated, and again, that interesting stitching design. And yeah, like I said, just remember the texture and the leather. And this it does have the screens in the back, which I'll show a little portion where they're on. But it's another feature this has. It's pretty nice. And then you can see the cup holders. Climate controls down below, heated seats for the second row. Now, I believe that it heats the side seats. I don't think it heats the middle seat. Correct me in the comment section below if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's just the side seats and not the center bench seat in the middle row. And then here's the screens while they're on. So you can see a uh, Hulu. Then you got the HDMI, which you can connect to it, and then headphones and all that as well. And then you got the power button. You can press to turn it off if you don't want to use it anymore. But button back pack over to the Tahoe. Uh, just notice that with the door panel, you know, still have nice materials, but it just doesn't look as pretty from a design standpoint. And also just notice the texturing on the leather trim uh, isn't the same, right? With the GMC, they really like uh, show that it's like cowhide, whereas this, it's, it's like smoother kind of in general texture. I do like the piping on the seat though. I think that looks really good. It's one of the high points of the Tahoe in my opinion. And then again, power side steps. And there's leg room, and then you guys can see headroom, and then notice cup holders. And we have the same little climate control section with heated seats, and so that's all the same. This one doesn't have TVs in the back, so that's something. Uh, but that's an option. It's not like part of the package. But you can see here with the third row, again, like I said, space is the same. It's just harder to get in the third row when you have the bench seat in the, mid in, in the middle. So just kind of take that into account with the Yukon. Now popping back to the front of the Yukon, you can see here with the door panel again uh, just from a design perspective it looks a little bit prettier uh, materials are you know somewhat similar obviously a little bit different with leather right and you can see all the window controls those front two are automatic you got memory seats and then the mirrors do power fold in 
And then I love the shape of the speaker for the Bose sound system. I think that looks great. And then you got the Denali logo. And then here's the front seat again with the Denali logo there in the center portion that's perforated all down the center. And then you can see the interesting stitching there. And then pedal layout. You've got the light control right here. And then notice we've got our drive mode select as well as the drive line select. It has four wheel high as well as four wheel auto. And then the air suspension button to raise and lower it. And then you got your parking brake right there. And then lane departure, parking sensor, stability control, hill descent control for the camera system, the outlets. Heads up display, there's there's a lot of controls there. Trailer brake control, and then the steering wheel is power adjustable. And then popping back over to the Tahoe, you guys are gonna notice that other than you know the look of the door panel, right? With the material use, everything is the same um, with the controls, right? And they're all in the same place as well. So nothing's changed with that. And then a little bit different again with the seat design. Notice it says high country on it. And then you can see the design there in the center of the seat and then adjustments on the side and then this is high country down below again and then pedal layout right there and then all the same controls everything is identical here so there's uh, no difference with that uh, except this one looks like it has um, auto stop start i don't think i saw auto stop start on the other one so i know that they took it out for a little bit and so this one has it but that one but it's it's just it was just because of supply shortage with different parts that's why they took auto stops out of some of the vehicles so other than that though it's identical with all the functions so that's that now popping back into the yukon ooh, got the full digital dash so here's the steering wheel uh, again you can see there with the brown coloration on it and then the stitching there on the center portion and then notice the controls for the center stack and then we've got heat steering wheel button and then we have like a cruise control denali logo there in the center and then turn signal windshield wiper stock and you know it's a, it's a nice looking steering wheel radio controls are on the back by the way and then here's the digital dash so first off you can see that you know resolution on it's great and i, I like the little animations that it has with certain things and information wise you can see stuff on the vehicle music navigation all that you know nothing's really changed since the 2021 in terms of the information you see it's just the formatting looks different it looks a little bit nicer looks a little bit more modern as well which is great and uh, aside from that you can see here with the drive modes so you've got the sport and notice it gives you a little animation with the yukon which is pretty cool and then we've got our off-road and then our tow haul mode and then notice it's raising or lowering the suspension depending on what drive mode you go into, which is pretty cool. And then you actually do have some different, uh, you can just manually change the suspension. That's what that suspension button's for. So basically what you do is you press the ride height button and then you twist the dial. So you can see where we're at with the ride height. And then you can change that and it'll kind of show you on either screen. And then notice it'll show you like the little lowering label right there. So pretty cool system. Here's the center infotainment system. So notice we got the backup camera with trajectory lines, turn the steering wheel, full 360 view, and resolution on the camera is fantastic. So you can see that hole and with the side view wheel shot. And then you got the zoom in function if you're hooking up to a trailer, which is great. So you can spot yourself, basically. And as for the rest of the infotainment system, I, I feel like it's very nicely integrated into the dash. That's a big plus in my personal opinion. And look at the material use around it. Also looks really solid. And then response of the screens, great. Uh, basically, Chevy already had, I shouldn't say Chevy, I should say GM, sorry. GM already had a really solid infotainment system. And then they've just basically improved upon it over time. And then here's the gear selector off to the side. So you notice you got your park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then low. And then the L is for like your manual shift mode. Um, but you can use it for like low range in a sense where you can shift into lower gears. So if you're going down a canyon and all that. Um, and then notice the wood trim all around it and then all of the padding there on the dash and then down below. So it definitely looks great from a material standpoint. And then you got your analog controls for the radio, climate controls. Again, you do have the climate zone in the rear, um, but you've got the two for the front and then heated and cooled seats for the front passengers. And then you can see the controls for the rear climate. Notice the little piece of wood trim that covers up that portion in the center. Definitely a cool look. And then we've got... Little charging ports and the wireless phone charger as well in that area. And then a couple cup holders. And here's the center console. So this is just taken right out of the uh, trucks, actually. Really good from a storage space perspective. And also notice the material use on that. And then normal glove box. Nothing too crazy going on with that. 
and then popping here up to the top you can see with the sunroof we do have a panoramic sunroof at the top which is another nice feature to have you got a bunch of controls up there for like the seats and the tailgate and the sunroof and you know normal stuff that you see at the top of a vehicle and then this does have the camera mirror system and look at that mclaren in the back that's pretty cool wow <laughs> um here's a window sticker so 2022 yukon denali uh, four-wheel drive and uh, notice here the uh, name for the red paint but here's all like the standard equipment and you can see the options on this so again denali ultimate package eleven thousand dollars for the package but it comes with a lot of nice options you can see it it makes it fully loaded pretty much uh, as standard when you do the denali ultimate but you can see after all options total msrp there is just a bit over eighty five thousand uh, dollars for this and popping back over to the tahoe now the cool startup animation there with the digital dash here's the steering wheel so notice with the material use all around and then the stitching there in the center portion and then kind of on the steering wheel and then notice all the controls are all the same there on the steering wheel so that's that part of the uh, interface at least is identical so really simplistic and then turn signal windshield wiper stock still radio controls in the back as well and then going to the gauge cluster itself you can see again just as nice with the resolution and the uh, animation style and again still have that center portion which will show you different bits of information pretty simplistic with that and uh, response time when you scroll through is actually really quick too which is another big plus and then we do have cool animations with the different drive modes just like on the yukon so you can see like when you go into the off-road mode and the tow haul mode and then notice the air suspension is adjusting just like the yukon so it's got the same exact system as yukon has and then same thing with the ride height changing so you just press the button and then you twist the dial to change the ride height to the different heights and a little bit instead of saying like off-road just says maximum ground clearance because they're like you know what you're not taking this thing off-road which uh by the way i did take the escalate off-road that has the magna ride and this air suspension system so uh, look up that video <laughs> if you haven't it kind of ended in disaster but uh you can take it off-road even though they uh don't call it off-road mode it's it's off-road mode Anyways, there's the whole camera system set up. And then you can see it's, it's identical. So get just as many camera views with this. Uh, Resolution is just as solid. So that's unchanged between both of the vehicles. And as for the rest of the infotainment system, first off, notice that it's not as uh, integrated into the dash as what you have with the GMC, right? This just is kind of like plopped onto the top. So they have definitely gone for a different uh, stylistic you know perspective with this one right compared to the yukon so that's a little bit different but functionality is identical it's the same screen and then notice here the shifter off to the side and the same again functionality is identical uh, but just notice the material use doesn't look quite as nice as in the gmc and you can see the climb control section down below with the heated and cooled seats dual zone for the front and you got the rear climate and then notice here with the charging area and then you can't cover it up like in the yukon so again that looks a little bit different doesn't have the sliding trays to cover everything up center console is the same though and then notice here uh, we've got this little storage space off to the side which is kind of interesting and then you can see the material use on the dash you know it looks great and then got a regular glove box down below nothing too groundbreaking there and then panoramic center just like the yukon and then you can see all the controls here at the top, identical with the seeds and the hatch and the sunroof. And uh, this one also uh, has the camera mirror system. So yeah, there you go. Camera mirror. Can't forget about that. So both of them have like same technology. So as you again, 2022 high country, and then here's the standard equipment. So obviously there's gonna be some differences in standard equipment between both of the vehicles, right? Even though they're ultimately, you know, they're not the same vehicle, but they're little bit different um, but you can see here with the optional equipment a little bit different with the setup so notice the high country deluxe is not nearly as expensive as the denali ultimate package but total msrp is pretty close right just under eighty thousand dollars so to fully uh, sum things up stylistically right exterior wise it's just going to depend on which one you like more uh whether it's the yukon or the tahoe like i said i feel like the yukon has more distinct styling because the tahoe literally looks like the non-luxury version of the escalade because the headlights are so similar and then the yukon just you know it ultimately 
you know, the overall shape and everything, the vehicle is the same as the Tahoe and the Escalade, but it just, it looks different enough stylistically. It's, it's distinct. And that massive grill definitely helps out with giving it quite a bit of road presence from an interior perspective. They both have really nice interiors. It's just going to depend which one you like more. So again, with the Tahoe, it's kind of like more smooth surfaces. Whereas with the Yukon, they've gone for more of like trying to show that, Hey, this is leather. So they really make it so that it looks like a cowhide, which again, some of you might like that. And some of you might not like that. And then the stitching in the Yukon is quite a bit it's uh, crazier, right? <laughs> um, and then moving from that, from a feature perspective, I mean, the Yukon had the TVs in the back, uh, but other than that, all of the features and options on them are identical. And so it's really just going to depend on which one you like the look of from an interior perspective more, and then from an exterior perspective more, and then performance is the same, right? They have the same suspension. They have, you know, they both have Magna Ride. They both have air suspension. All of that is identical. Powertrains are identical. Towing capacity is identical. Storage space is identical. So again, it's really going to depend on which one you like more. And so you're just going to have to like ask yourself, right? is the Yukon really worth the roughly five or six grand more than the Tahoe high country? If I'm getting all the same equipment, if the answer is yes, then yeah. If the answer is no, then again, that makes sense too. 